In Kick-Ass, a run-of-the-mill teenage pushover follows through on what all comic book fans fantasize about, dons a cheesy costume and gets ready to fight for justice, truth and the American way. Hell yeah. I enjoyed Kick-Ass, it won't make this year's top 10 list, but when it comes to killing a couple of hours, Kick-Ass certainly does the trick. The film has become the subject of cries of outrage. Usually superhero films are PG or PG-13 fare because its titular caped boy scouts prefer to disarm rather than kill their nemeses who, no matter how evil, always keep a civil tongue. In Kick-Ass, however, the costume crusaders take no prisoners and cuss like sailors on shore leave. Amongst the critics not amused by Kick-Ass is Roger Ebert. Well, Kick-Ass satirizes and deconstructs the false virtues and moral high crowns of superheroes. For example, in Spider-Man, a recurring slice of homespun wisdom is with great power comes great responsibility. A man has to be understanding and put his wife before himself. When Peter Parker finally stands up for himself after years of being his employer and landlord's doormat, director Sam Raimi clearly expects us to roll our eyes at him. In the world of Spider-Man there are no real bad guys, only misunderstood, misguided folks who end up wanting to set things right. Furthermore, in Spidey's New York, people will not look the other way when one of their own is in trouble. In the dark night, a mortally wounded bank manager croaks, criminals in this town used to believe in things, honor, respect. Yeah. Later, Joker places bombs on two ferries, one carrying long-standing members of the community, the other carrying hardened convicts, and threatens to blow up both unless one ferry willingly blows up the other. And what do the jailbirds do with their detonator? Not very likely. As much as I enjoy Superman, The Dark Knight and Spider-Man, these movies are sociologically naive and I find it troubling that they record martyrdom as being virtuous. The philosophy of superhero films have conditioned us into expecting that when Kick-Ass closes in on two carjackers, his good intentions alone will suffice to emerge as the victor. Instead, a young poser takes a severe beating, ends up with a knife in his abdomen, and has to undergo months of rehabilitation. Do any of the witnesses step in to help kick ass during his moment of need? Well, the Good Samaritans do produce their cells, but only to record the event and upload the footage to YouTube. Hit Girl's father Big Daddy, a well-to-do widower, donned a costume, raised his daughter to be an avenging angel, and used his gadgets and his guns not to fight for justice or to protect the innocent, but to exact revenge. What good does it do? He ends up being burned alive. And in spite of years of training and preparation, Hit Girl is ultimately still only a pre-adolescent who finds herself wounded and scared on the floor after trying to single-handedly take on the town's drug lord. Kick-Ass reminded me of Quentin Tarantino's Kill Bill for several reasons. Both films are stylish and effort filled to the brim with unapologetic comical ultraviolence, feature potty-mouthed anti-heroes and mix satire with poignant moments of reflection and sorrow. Watching Hit Girl do that thing she does, I found myself thinking, this is the girl Bibi would have become had Bill lived to raise her. After reading Ebert's thumbs down kick-ass review, I wanted to know what he made of Kill Bill, and was bemused to learn that he was over the moon by Tarantino's opus of bloody revenge. The critic can be quite inconsistent and capricious when it comes to reviewing films dealing with controversial themes. For example, when reviewing David Lynch's Blue Velvet, the clearly upset Ebert stated that, because of its quasi-comical tone, the film didn't deserve to show Isabella Rossellini naked and bloodied. And then he tries to take the edge off her shocking scenes by turning the whole thing into some kind of a joke. Well, either this material is funny, in which case you don't take advantage of your stars, or it isn't funny, in which case it shouldn't have so much campy and adolescent dialogue. In the first place, the movie was shot in two halves, so she had no idea making her part of the movie that all of the stuff outdoors and in the daylight was going to be smarmy and campy and funny with all kinds of in-jokes. For some reason, the very same Roger Ebert praised Wes Craven's Last House on the Left, 
a film in which graphic scenes of two teenage girls being disrobed, humiliated, raped and eventually killed are intercut with scenes of lowbrow comedy featuring two bumbling keystone cops failing badly in their attempts to save the day. <laughs> Yeah, when it comes to finding the right balance between sexual horror and comedy, David Lynch sure could learn a thing or two from Blast House on the left. What did Ebert have to say about the scene in which Hit Girls defies gravity and butchers anonymous henchmen? Well, the same could be said of the crazy 88 ninjas who are sliced and diced by the bride in Kill Bill, but an admiring Ebert wrote the following about that film. The tagline of Ebert's kick-ass review is a sarcastic. Well, no kickles were coming from me when Hit Girl was about to be pumped full of lead. I won't deny the scene's potential to elicit laughter, but that's the risk of satire. It might go over people's heads. Take Oliver Stone's Natural Born Killers, for example. The film mocked those who turned serial killers into media heroes, yet many who saw the film genuinely admired Mickey and Mallory's nonconformity. And Stone later had to appear in court when a couple of unstable youths killed two store clerks after watching the film. Why didn't Ebert give his Kill Bill review the tagline? A pregnant bride lies blood splattered on the crown and gets shot in the head at point blank range. Ha ha ha. Or how about a 17 year old schoolgirl Gogo disembowels an out of his league suitor and gets a board studded with nails slammed into her skull. Ha ha ha. Ebert writes. Well, it's the wrong film for such a conversation. It would have been as misplaced as the bride and her curiously untroubled daughter Bibi having a conversation about where Daddy Bill went all of a sudden. When is it okay for a film to show a child in peril or a child committing acts of violence? What should the age of consent be? 14? 15 perhaps? How about Sweet 16? Or 17 like Coco? In Orphan, a film praised by Ebert, the titular antagonist is only nine years old when she starts killing people in front of her much younger sibling, breaks her own arm to make it seem she was abused, and gets kicked in the face with such force that her neck snaps on impact. And yes, I know, Esther turns out to be a disguised adult, but is still played by then 11-year-old actress Isabel Furman. I'm pretty sure that Mr. Ebert would tell me it depends on context whether or not it's okay to show children as victims or as villains. And I've tried to explain in this video that kick-ass isn't catering to sadistic hipsters. But something else seems to be on the critic's mind, namely a concern about the impact of cinematic violence on children. If it's really back to that tiresome old discussion, no film can be defended with highfalutin explanations about context, because impressionable young children couldn't care less if one ultra-violent satire is hailed as an exuberant celebration of movie making, ghosting with heedless joy from one audacious chapter to another, working as irony, working as satire, working as drama, working as pure action, and another as morally reprehensible. Young children will take what transpires on the screen at face value, and both Kill Bill and Kick Ass, not to mention countless of other R-rated films, can have a potentially negative influence on young children who get their hands on the DVDs. If I ever have kids and they clandestinely watch an R-rated film at a young age, I'd rather have that film be kick-ass, because it at least shows them that if they're stupid enough to imitate adolescent or adult superheroes who are still at an advantage when battling a dozen of bad guys, they'll end up getting hurt. You're not on the